Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Welcome again. Listen, hold on one sec. I'm so excited about what I'm going to show you today because I think it's the perfect project for you to make for yourself if you have a furry friend in your family or you have friends that have paw, uh, dogs. These are just fabulous, especially this time of year. I'm gonna show you how to make this really cool no-sew collar for your dog. But the reason why it's so cool right now is because I'm gonna use the reflective material that I got from Auntie Tay. I'll have a link down below to AuntieTay.com. It's actually shopAuntieTay.com. And if you use my code, Patty Ann, you'll get another 10% off. But anyway, so that's what I'm going to use today. Uh, and this is the, the mock-up that I made. Okay, and I'll show you what the collar is going to look like if you look up in my, at my screen in just a couple of seconds, a couple minutes. So what I did was I made this mock-up. This isn't the fabric I'm going to use. I'm using a really cute one. I used to work at a quilt shop and I got all kind of really cute fabrics. So wait do you see. Anyway, so what I did was I figured out, okay, one of the little girl's name, this is my niece's dog, is Oki. And I thought, now how big can I make that name that it will fit on here nicely? So I just got my measuring tape out and I measured across. And by the way, this one is going to fit a large dog or a medium sized dog. And the dimensions that I used were a 14 inch square. And I just folded it in half. And I'll show you that in a bit. But I decided that like 8 inches by 2 inches would look good for this. But I'm not very good at visualizing things a lot of times. So what I did was I made this in silhouette and then I printed it and cut it out. I just cut it with a pair of scissors and placed it on here to see, you know, do I like that? Is it too big, too little? And I actually liked it pretty well. So the other things I thought I would do, since this is going to go around Oki's neck like that, I wanted a little reflective stuff on both sides of her in case a car came near the side of her like that. So these are going to be paw prints and then I'm going to put one more paw print down here. So again what I was doing was just figuring out the sizes that I should make the paws. At first I had these two inches by two inches but when I had only a certain amount of the reflective material left over I had to make them smaller so everything would fit. So I ended up making them 1.6 inches square and this was three by three inches. So let's go over to Silhouette and I'll show you how I got this accomplished. Okay, so here we are at Silhouette and you can see this is what I've done so far and notice when I went to do it, I did mirror it since it is HTV. So let's go back over here to where it says design so I can show you where I began designing this. All right, let me move. Let me group all of this. See how I had to skinny it onto this one little piece here because I only had a seven inch long piece. That's why I had to change the sizes of some of these. Let me group this and move it over. So the first thing that I did was I came here and I got a box and I drew the box and do you remember what size I said I wanted it to be? Yep, so I unlocked the lock right here and I changed the size of the box to be uh, 8 inches wide. I'm going to hit the 8 and hit enter on my key. Oh, oh, it says 18. Yikes. I want 8. 8 and hit enter and then I wanted it to be 2 inches high or tall. So that's how much I have to work with. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit by using the magnifying glass and the first one I'm going to do I guess I'll just do Emma. Let's go in a little further of this and so I came over to my text tool clicked on that then I came over here and clicked and typed in the word Emma and I have on my cap locks and I'm going to stretch no first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to change the font once again I want it to be a very fat font or a thick font so that there's a lot of reflective material being used so I'm going to change that to impact you can choose any font that you like that you know is really thick. Okay, so now I have impact here and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to stretch it really wide. And I'm going to get rid of this panel over here because I don't need it opened. Okay, so now I'm going to bring Emma up here 
and I'm going to stretch it wider because I really want it to be about eight inches wide and I'm going to bring it down this way so it's taller too by two inches. So I want it to be about eight by two and that looks pretty good right there like that. All right. So the next thing that I did was I just went ahead and got rid of this box because I no longer need it. And if I want to, I could change this to the color that my um, material is. And it's kind of like a gray, silver gray right now. So I'll make it like that. So now all I have to do is I'm going to get the, um, the little paw prints. So what I did for those was I went to Google and I typed up in here paw print. And as I've shown you before, you always want to get the largest image that you can so it's not a big messy blur. So I always come over to Tools. And then right here it usually says Size. And I change it to Larger Than, the largest I can get. Okay. And then these are the images that I can choose from. They're nice and large. And I think I just chose this one right here. Actually... Which one did I choose? It really doesn't matter. I think I chose this one. So all I had to do was to right click on it and say copy image. And then come over here into Silhouette Business Edition. Right click and say paste. And there it is. Now I want to check. Yep. Look at when I drag that over that gray box right there. Can you see that there's a white box behind that image? We don't want that. It won't work right. So what we need to do is we need to come over here, way over here, to the Trace tool. And that's going to get rid of that white box. I'm going to go Select Trace Area, and I'm going to select this right here. And I'm going to move my threshold up if I need to so that my whole paw is covered, colored in. And then I'm just going to say Trace and Detach. So what's that's done is right now I can move that white part away. You see it right up here? And while it's selected, I can just hit delete on my keyboard. And then I have the little paw. And oh, just notice that they're all individual pieces. I'm going to hit undo to move that one back. And I'm going to right click on all of it after I select it and say group. Now remember what I wanted. I wanted, let's see, three paws. But two of them, I want to be, let's say I changed it to 1.6 inches approximately. So I'm going to lock my lock right here, and I'm going to change this to 1.6. 1 1.6, and hit Enter. Perfect. I'm just going to put that up there for now. Move that over. I'm going to click on it, and then all I have to do is to go Control-D to duplicate it. And then I can move it over to this side just like that. And then the only other thing I had to do was I wanted one more down here that was going to be three inches by three inches. So I just click on this, hold down my Alt key if I want to duplicate it this way, and drag one down and that makes another one. But it's not the right size. So all I have to do is come up here and the lock is already locked. So I'm going to change it to three inches. Just like that. Okay. So I'm happy with that. So now what I can just do is right click on all this and group it. And then for Cricut Design Space, of course, what you'll do is you'll come up here to File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive, and you'll name it and you'll save it as an SVG file. Now you must have the Business Edition to be able to save it as an SVG file. Now. If you have a Cameo, you don't have to save it as an SVG, and that's why you can use the Designer Edition, maybe even the Basic. But for the Cameo, all you do now is go over here to Send. All of this stuff is being sent right here. I have it clicked on Cut, so you can see everything that's going to cut. And over here, I changed my material to Heat Transfer, what is it, Reflective. Because I am using anti taste Heat Transfer Reflective. And I'm using the Auto Blade, so I don't worry about anything else. Now, what I do do when my machine is connected, and right now I have it turned off, 
but I always send a test over first. So what I'd probably do in this case is move this little move this down a little bit. I could actually ungroup all of these and then just move that one paw down a little bit and move these others back up so as not to waste any more vinyl than I have to. And the reason why I did that was to leave a little bit of space up here for my test. I always like to test things. I don't want to try to cut out this whole thing only to find out it didn't work. That's why I test. I even test when I'm using my Cricut. I make my own little test up. So then I would just go to send and cut it out and I'd continue from there. Okay, I've cut everything out and I'm ready to weed now. And notice that I did do a little sample test, test cut right here. I always recommend that you do those. So, just gonna start weeding this. And this is the reflective vinyl that I used for my last project that I did, the two t-shirts that I made for Lily. And this is the stuff that I just get so excited about because it weeds so easily. It's just a dream. I really don't even need this, probably the tool. I almost forgot to um, mirror everything. That would have been a disaster. Because I did have to adjust the sizes of these things a little bit because I've run out of the supplies of my reflective material my reflective HTV and I think this is really going to be super cute I don't think you know I haven't shown you the fabric I'm going to use yet oh it's so cute I used to work at a quilt shop and so I had access to all the cute stuff that came in there we spent more money than we made my friend and I so let's see this is an O, has a middle part to come out. Okay, it's all weeded now, and I'm just going to cut some parts of these, some of this apart. So I'm going to cut in between the names. Okay, there's Oki. That's one. Now I'm going to get Emma. There's Emma. And now I'll cut the paws apart. I probably have more of the large paws than I need, but I had some extra material, so I thought I would just cut them out. Cut the small ones apart because there's one that goes on each side. And now I'm going to show you the fabric that I use, or I'm going to use. So cute. Here it is. Look at this. Isn't that going to be adorable? Oh my gosh. All right, so let me try putting one of the names on here just so we can get an idea. Emma. And I'll put a little paw here and a little paw here. And a big paw down, whoopsie, a big paw down here. And I think that's going to be gorgeous. And I think that's really going to make a lot of reflection for her at night. So I'm ready to press this. And notice it's still open. I haven't sewn anything. Of course, I'm not going to really sew it. I'm going to use the heat, the hot glue gun again. You can sew it if you want to and turn it inside out. I'm just going to use a hot glue gun and I'll show you how in a little bit. First, I'm going to go to the heat press so and put this on there. Okay, I have my heat press set for 305 degrees for 15 seconds. This is the one that I really like to use. I have it linked below if you'd like to see which one it is, just if you'd like. Uh, this one, the reason why I like it is because it has this tray that pulls out. But not only that, but I prefer one that swings away so that I don't have to worry about getting burnt by this thing from the clamshell one. That's just my preference. Everyone has different preferences. So I'm just going to warm this up for about three seconds. So I thought I would just kind of move that down to about here, just kind of playing it by ear. And I'm going to see what these other things will look like. Here's a little paw, which I'd kind of like up near her neck so that it shows well. Let me pull this out a little bit. Like I said, I can pull it. 
And these don't have to be spaced perfectly or anything. And by the way, I am going to cut two and a half inches off of both sides of this, and I should have probably done that first. On the next one, I will. So I'm not confused by that, but let's just make sure it's evened. Okay, that looks pretty good, and I'll just do the last one right here, which goes down here at the end, at the bottom. So that looks pretty good. I hope those paw prints are pretty centered and I can use if I want to a piece of Teflon sheet which I usually do use and I'm going to do this for 15 seconds at 305 degrees and this is a warm peel I can take this piece of Teflon off if I want let's be careful because it is hot lay it aside let this cool off a little bit and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this right side out or inside out and glue it together but first I'm going to cut off these tips let me start peeling these perfect this is really super cute I love this stuff <laughs> okay that's really cute so now join me over at the table and I'll show you how I'm going to cut this off Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from this tip over two and a half inches. So I just find the two and a half inch mark on my ruler and line this line up so it's going to be nice and straight. Two and a half was what I had done. So I'll do that on both sides like that. Flip this side around. And again, the two and a half inch mark right here with the point line up this straight line on my ruler and cut all right so the only thing I have now to do is I'm going to turn this inside out like this match up these edges and I'm going to glue down this area and down this area let me heat up my glue gun and I'll show you okay now I'm going to show you how I would glue this so I just turn it inside out and make sure that the edges are matching up nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the opening where that little th two and a half inches was that I cut off. So I'm going to start here at this edge to make sure I get it well done. And lots of times what I like to use is a popsicle stick, but I just don't have one with me right this second. So maybe I'll use the edge of my weeding tool. <laughs> So I don't burn my fingers that much so I'm gonna put a little bit here first just a good blob of it to get it really nicely adhered there because that's where it's gonna have some pressure where I turn it and by the way you'll notice I like working on a Teflon, Teflon sheet or a piece of parchment paper so I don't mess up my cutting boards that are underneath here and I can make a nice strip here and hopefully I'll have enough glue I don't I'll just end it here because you will have had the idea and go all the way down here I mean I have more glue it's just not right here where I'm sitting all the way there we go push that down so it stays really well and of course you could sew this if you wanted to and if you sewed it it would be fun to add some other things like maybe some pom-poms or something like that to, it was a little foo-foo dog and again I'm starting up here at the tip where I'm going to put the uh, their actual real collar through here so I want to make sure that that's really well adhered because that's the part that will be getting some strain on it when I'm turning this right side out Looks like I'll have enough glue, I think. Again, I just do little bits at a time. Just pressing down as I go. So what I'm going to do now is just turn it right side out. And just start working it out. This one actually is for the other puppy. The last one I did was for Emma. This one is for Oki. They're both little girls. So 
So just turn it all the way. And I should have two holes, one here and one here. Now I wouldn't mess with these things myself. I tried it on my first one, tried to put glue in there and turn them inside out. And it really wasn't easy to do and it kind of made a mess. I would just leave them raw like that. It's not going to hurt anything. And then just push this down to the point. Glue strings. Hot glue strings. And there is Oki's collar. And again, since my heat press is still a little bit warm, I can just go over there and give it a real quick little press. Not much because I don't want anything to happen to this glue that I have on here. So that's it.